Well, y'all know what time it is. That's right, I always love Christmas time. The candy canes, the stockings, the Christmas trees, people murdering each other just to get a good sale. It's always the most lovely time of the year. But that's not the only good thing about this time. That's right, I'm talking about Christmas specials. This is the only time of the year where you see a big surge of them. They're always fun and puts you right in the Christmas spirit. But there are so many to look at this time of the year, so that leaves me to ask, what special should I look at? Ho ho ho, it's your boy, Dub St. Nick of Review Your Life, and I'm in black and white to fit your format. And the question for most animation reviewers every year is always, what am I going to review this Christmas? Which usually follows up with some crap that other channels have already done countless times, or cult classes that need no additional words. Um, okay. Putting aside the fact that you got in here without my knowledge, what exactly do you have in mind? Hey man, glad you asked. Today, we're gonna reach far to the bottom of the dumpster for a film not many know exists. As many may know, Cartoon Network is no stranger to showcasing stuff that only airs once. But this time, it's a Christmas film, no less. So you tell me, how festive is Dinosaurs to you, man? I'd say about as festive as tax season. Great! Then 2004 film The Christmas Dinosaur should have the spirit flowing. Oh yeah! I remember this one. It was on Cartoon Network back in 2004, but for some reason never aired again. Which is very weird, especially for Cartoon Network. They usually play repeats for their specials every year. Well, back then at least. So it's strange that this one only got a one-time showing, which can't be too good a sign. Aw oh, man, don't get me started on the fact that Scary Godmother is swept under the rug by them. But yeah, The Christmas Dinosaur just ended up being one of those straight-to-DVD bargain bin shovelware movies that you just stare at and go, <laughs> LOL what? However, it was written by someone quite notable in the cartoon game, Michael Ryan. He's known to have worked on Goof Troop, Johnny Bravo, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, and the list goes on and is directed by Bruce Johnson, whose works are The Christmas Dinosaur. Oh no. Wait, so you're telling me that there's only one person of note working on this and everyone else has no major credentials other than this? Oh, that sounds just lovely. So keep in mind, this had came out during the newly launched CN City era of Cartoon Network, so it has quite the challenge ahead to compete with all the juggernauts of that time. So let's see how it holds up. Oh, and put up a clickbaity thumbnail too, making it look like we're about to shit on it. Well, I guess that's just part of the course here. This is The Christmas Dinosaur. The film opens up looking okay. The animation looks straight from Canada, which I find amazing considering that it isn't. You sure? Cause this looks like their handiwork. The stilted movement, the uninteresting designs, and generic backgrounds. This could easily be leftovers from their Fort Knox of crap. Oh damn man, I was just being nice. But now that you mention it, this style of animation is certainly dated. Like there was no passion put into it at all. But hey, someone got paid, and that's all that matters. Moving on though, we are introduced to the two main characters of the special, Jason and Tommy, two brothers who act like brothers. But I find it highly entertaining on how Jason completely bullies his brother any chance he gets. You eat any more raw cookie dough, Tommy, and you're gonna get worms. Isn't that what the little spaz got last year? I'm only seven. Yeah, well, Cozy Cub is for three-year-olds. <gasps> You're hopeless. Jesus, there's sibling rivalry and then there's just plain resentment. Only I'm worthy of mom and dad's love. Me, me. Oh, by the way, I cat Susie. Funny, because I thought that was her too, but unfortunately, she didn't have the free time for this mess. So we have a dedicated impersonator instead named... Wait, the credits don't show who voiced who. It... Why? Oh my goodness, this is just beautiful. What? No way in hell they didn't credit. Wow. Not even the actors wanted people to know what part they played in this. This just gets better and better. So basically the plot line to the story is as follows. Jason receives a gift from his aunt 
more than likely being something dinosaur related concerning Dustin's main fetish, but what he gets is a whole lot more. A real dinosaur? No, stupid. A pterodactyl. But a pterodactyl is a dinosaur. Is it? Wait. Man, is this true? Well, according to the internet, they're not. So this movie is technically false advertising. You mean to tell me we have a movie that was the director's first work, the actors wanted no credit in, and the title makes no sense? Man, I believe we struck gold. I'm struck and rich! Basically, the dinosaur is a plot device to grow the relationship of the brothers, Jason and Tommy. Which, as you watch, isn't really that bad. Sure, Jason picks on Tommy here and there, but it doesn't seem like they outright hate each other. Yeah, like I mentioned before, they're just brothers acting like brothers. But apparently, they help each other where it matters most, when winged creatures are involved. Which is the only true way to show brotherly bonding when you think about it. So Jason receives a package in the mail from his aunt from probably the most unrealistically happy mailman. Ugh, that's definitely not somebody you should let near your kids. The eager Jason wants to open his gift immediately, but his parents wasn't having it and told him the basic rules of Christmas 101, not opening your gifts until the 25th. But the impatience of Jason overwhelmed him through that night, and he decides to sneak a peek in which he's caught in the act. Wow, this kid sucks. The next morning, Jason is told to watch his brother for the day, which opens up his second chance to view the present. But to his disappointment, it is revealed to be just an egg. Not just any egg, it's a real, for the sake of not sounding like a nerd, dinosaur egg. Which begs the question, where the hell do you get a dinosaur egg from? Was Jurassic Park having an everything must go sale? Considering how things have been going lately, I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. To speed things up a bit, the egg ends up hatching, revealing to be a pterosaur, which apparently isn't a pterodactyl, but whatever. And they quickly acquaint each other, and teach him not to eat certain things, and learn that it's a fish eater. So they ended up feeding him fish sticks. There's no fish in fish sticks. And their parents immediately are concerned by the brother's behavior, as all of this goes down. But not by much, cause she just passes it off as a fever. You were actually letting your brother play in your room? Sure, why not? You must have a fever. You're acting very strange. You know, because brothers being nice is always a sign of sickness. The boys eventually have to go to school during the holidays for some reason, and they need to come up with a quick fire plan to hide the dinosaur while they're away. So Tommy distracts his mom as Jason hides him in a treehouse for the day. Is there a draft in here? Uh, mom, the fridge is open. Got him. Anyway, they have a nosy ass neighbor catching sight of what they're doing and snitch his own sight. But the mom doesn't believe her due to her having wacky imaginations commonly. Everyone in this neighborhood has been against me from the start. First when the alien landed on my roof, nobody believed me, and now. That woman drinks just a little too much coffee. Oh sure, coffee. You sure she's not taking something a little stronger? Which honestly would explain why everyone's eyes are so wide. These people are clearly doped up on something. Hell, the parents at the beginning couldn't go one frame without smiling. They go to school, everything's Gucci, then a bully shows up, getting all up in Tommy's grill. And I have to say, this is the most awkward series of grunts in a scene I've ever saw. Would you call me? Just leave me alone! Ah! Ooh, where are you going? <laughs> leave me alone! After their dispute, Spot, their dinosaur, comes swooping down, gobbling the bully alive, and then the credits just start rolling. A very interesting ending, to say the least. And you and I both know that's not how it really ends. Oh, that would be pretty entertaining. No, what is even more crazy is Tommy takes a ride with Spot around the outside of the school in plain daylight. In fact, how did nobody see the dinosaur on the playground? Was there nobody else around or is everybody so doped up that seeing a pterodactyl is just part of their normal drug trips? So now we cut to a montage of the trio having fun after school while I'm assuming copyrighted music plays in the background and afterwards the dinosaur starts to feel sad because it has yet to meet a family of his own kind and apparently they decide to fly him back to his homeland where other dinos dwelled. This is the year 2000 right? Like, this is understandable if it was Dragon Ball Z, but what is even going on here? 
Honestly, I have no clue. Somehow people could get their hands on dinosaur eggs, not question it, and also miss an entire civilization of dinosaurs that's not even hidden that well. I mean, look at this. The dinosaur home doesn't even have anything to really keep it covered. How has nobody flown over it and noticed this place? Anyway, Jason's trip to find Spot's family was a bust, but I guess it was the thought that counts. And the family spends their Christmas, as planned. However, there was one major flaw. Jason still opened his aunt's gift way too early, so eventually they had to fess up sooner or later, which leads us to the conclusion of the story, which is a bit too bizarre for my taste. So I'll let the guy who reviewed right now Kapow with no hesitation take it away from here. So the dinosaurs from the sanctuary all get together and look for Spot in the town, and everyone somehow doesn't get eaten or stepped on. Holy crap, I just realized, it's just like in Jurassic World. There was literally a whole park full of people ready to be picked off and somehow no one really got hurt. I didn't think anyone else saw this special, but that does explain Colin Trevero's mediocre writing. So anyway, Spot's family manages to find him and the brothers decide to give him back. But just before things can wrap up, we get a bit of a dark ending. Okay, that doesn't really happen, but it would have been far more interesting than anything that happened in this special. I can see why the actors didn't have their names next to the characters they played and why Cartoon Network didn't air this more. This special was just downright boring and forgettable. The characters are bland and leave no real impression on you. Christmas feels more like an afterthought all in favor for an E.T. plot ripoff, just missing the FBI. Is it the worst thing ever? No. There's far worse Christmas specials out there. But is it a great spectacle that captures the Christmas spirit? Absolutely fucking not. Which is a shame considering they could have done something with this. But sadly, it's just something that should remain extinct. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the review. Thanks for suggesting and joining me on this, D-Dub man. Thanks for having me on, man. I'll catch you next year when we review Tangerine Bear. <laughs> well, I hope that's just to be dramatic and not an ominous sign. And thank you all for watching. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and remember, it's just a deep thought. Bye.